Hello, hello, and welcome to episode four of our All the Mods 10 playthrough. Today, I'm happy to say it's unbelievable what we'll be diving into. So without further ado, let's hop in. So, yeah, um, outside of that really horrible pun, I, I was like, you know what? I don't need to pre-think of a pun before starting this intro. I can think of a B pun on the fly easy enough. Um, lo and behold, apparently not. Anyways, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be trying to get into bees, or rather trying to get them into some hives, if you know what I mean. Now, I have already done um, one sort of cycle of this if that makes sense or well, more than one cycle but i've started breeding some bees and gotten the the hang of things before just coming into this episode but i've not done it as i typically do where i'm at the end and i'm like hey this is what we did this is how we're doing it yada 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 so that being said we've also done a few other things in between episodes um because i still wanted to make some you know decent progress with things so we do have um a reactor from power now it's not the highest one typically y'all know me i don't like to really make these large contraptions unless i'm gonna go ahead and make it you know like a spirit or, or at least a niotic but i figured you know what the blazing has a generation factor of 10,000 fe per tick that's that's pretty good and it's something that it's like it's it's easy really the only thing you need in this is the uranite and the water but we have coal constantly being pumped out we have redstone constantly being pumped out um it has an automatic mode so it'll actually stop using all of its power as you can see right now it's not even being used um and yeah so it's it's really really not a bad bet to get into power and just invest a little bit and you may be saying chance you're also using power in your other playthrough right now in uh, project architect 2 and I say, yeah, well, you know, somebody make a damn power mod that's as simple as power and provides as much, all right? And then we'll then we'll start talking. Uh, <laughs> but most of them, if you want to get 10,000 FE per tick, it's not just build this block and then replicate it or you know upgrade it essentially, because that's that's how the reactor from power works. You start out with the starter um, with some uranite, which you can energize raw uranite or even uranium ingots. Um, to get this or even the ores if you happen to get those right so you can uh, you can get this stuff fairly simple you know the basic tiny capacitors comes from your uh, basic capacitor each one makes two so if you make a round of basic capacitors you're making eight tiny capacitors you know I don't, I don't have to go through all these crafting recipes with you guys and gals i'm sure you can click through read and um adjust and if not you know, if you if you are having problems with a crafting recipe here or there, by all means, drop it down in the comments. But I've realized I, I spent a lot of time just going through and be like, and this is how you craft this. When in reality, like, you don't need me to tell you that. You can read it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we went through, got all of these done. And again, it's just upgrading them from one to the next. The blazing does take the most. But if you have if you have looting on your, well, I think my sword's in my chest. If you have looting on your sword and you have um, a blaze spawner set up, kind of like what we do over there, and I've actually added some more things to it so that way all the blazes are one hit and the spawn range is reduced to one. So they're not spawning all over the place. They spawn directly on the spawner, one, two swipes, you know, depending on how many of her, uh, however many spawn there, and you're good to go. So it's really, really simple to get all that. I've not really upgraded our, our rods here, but to be fair, it, you don't need anything too, too fancy if you don't mind waiting on things. I'm pretty good about waiting, so, you know, we're, we're all right. One other thing, I do want to upgrade this ender cell. You'll notice it can only actually transfer 1,000 FE per tick. Our basic ender gates can output 2,000 FE per tick, so we're not even really keeping up with, um, well, basically ourselves there. But if you see here, the ender cells are actually pretty easy to, to craft. The only thing that changes is those four little crystals on the outside. However, the output can get pretty ridiculous. With that being said, we may go ahead and throw some diamonds in here for this. And um, 
you know, just just be good for the next bit. Um, something else that somebody pointed out down in the comments of the last video, and I hadn't even thought about it, you know, the fact that we could do this now or the fact that it was even a thing. I was complaining because we couldn't use lava when in reality there was a much better block we could be using, and that is a block of blazing crystal. Um, now you can get this just by taking your blazing crystal here, right? Blaze rod or blaze powder, however you fancy getting it. Then combine nine of them together and it gives you a block of blazing crystal. And um, yeah, it has a temp of 2800. Mm -hmm. So basically before we were getting about 80% of each reactor or of each generator. So we have the hardened version here. So instead of generating the 100 FE per tick that they typically do, we were generating 80. Now, however, if you click on this and you go to heat sources, you'll see that lava is at 1,000, magma blocks at 80. So just count 1,000 C is like baseline. That's 100%, 80%, 280%. So now we're doing 2.8 times whatever the amount says that it's going to generate. So this says 100, we're generating 280 for each one of these. So pretty good because um, those, I mean, I added a couple more. We have one, two, three, four, five, six now. Um, six times 280 is like, I don't know, rough estimate. It's above 1200. So we're getting roughly, let's just say how much power is actually making somewhere. Ah, here it is. We're getting 4.6 from this because we don't have a maximum efficiency. Also, as it heats up, it gets less efficient. And I don't have any solid coolant in here like snow or ice, which hopefully we we solve that today. But still, 4.6 times, you know, 1300 plus. Uh, we're doing pretty good on power. And um, I'm feeling pretty confident with leaving that alone for a while. So that's why we're going to be moving on to bees in this episode. Outside of those two things, I don't think we've done too much. I upgraded the spawner over there, and I can... Well, we'll go see that whenever the sun comes back up. Inside here, did I do anything? I took down some contraptions. Oh, I did go fishing and get Neptune's bounty. So we have um, the Neptunium bow, which... I don't know if it actually does any additional damage, or if it just makes arrows go smoothly through water, because... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe that's not the best <laughs> added effect. I don't know about you. I, I'm just not firing arrows too often in water. And don't get me wrong. Maybe it's partially because they don't fire straight. But you know, I don't think we really did anything else in between episodes. It was a little bit of a slower one because I was trying to get through, um, or at least most of the way through, Project Architect. Oh. Uh, yeah, duh, Chance, the big purple wire. The other thing I wanted to do this episode, I was like, man, I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> oh, so silly. And y'all were probably wondering about that contraption over on the right in there. That's right, that wasn't last episode. Sorry, dad brain got a little confused. All right, so Applied Energistics is what we're going to be diving into today on this um, on this mod pack. And you'll notice that we already have a lot of stuff in here, or so it would seem. However, in reality, we're just making smart use of the tools that Applied Energistics will give to us. So, you'll notice we have the crafting terminal up top with a, uh, with a wireless access point. Do, 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 right? And we even have an infinity range booster inside of it because in this mod pack, it's really not that expensive. I mean, you know, follow the recipe, but it's not, it's, it's nothing unobtainable, right? So if we take a look here, and I'll go ahead and favor it over here. We need three wireless boosters, iron, ender dust, certs quartz, flux dust. Ender dust, you can get, I mean, either by putting in the inscriber, or what I always do is just put it in the macerator, right? So that's easy. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So get three of these, which just means you need the recipe twice. Three netherite ingots, which we already have since we went to the nether and we're using our digital miner. Aluminum gear and two enderium gears. So let's take a look at this. We need eight enderium ingots total. And we can get that from smelting enderium dust, which we can get from using a hammer, two ender pearls, three lead dust, 
and some platinum. Um, so obviously lead, we already have a lot of platinum. I just went down mining. You just, just go look for it. <laughs> um, I don't recommend going through the modern industrialization route because, well, it does say you can use both dust. Um, but the reason being is that this will want you to turn it into platinum hotting it using the EBF and like go through a whole nother process. No, no, no. They actually have this one. This mod pack. <laughs> so some dust in some categories are nbt tagged i guess is the best way to say it so like you can use any platinum dust here however you can only use lead dust from the all the ores mod which means you have to get it by doing this you can't put it through um whatever the pulverizer is for modern industrialization because i always forget the actual name it's not macerator that's what it is um so you can't put this through the macerator it'll give you the wrong lead dust if you go here it's going to give you modern industrialization dust and it's not going to work in the recipe or at least it didn't for me this may be different for you perhaps they've updated it hopefully again i'm in the beta version of the uh, pack so there's going to be some kinks some bugs some here's some there's and they're definitely still working on it anyways so Enderium, ba 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 ba, lead, platinum, ender, really easy. And the nicest thing is you get four dust from this one recipe. So you just do this twice six lead, four ender pearls, very easily attainable. I would probably say platinum might be the most difficult for you to find. But if you just go down there and you just start fucking shooting through some stuff, you know, with your mining gadgets, it shouldn't be impossible. We found it. Well, hell, I can show you where i found it in my mind because i'm pretty sure i still remember the like physical location oh you have a good sense as far as a y level at least where i found it i'm not saying it's guaranteed not even saying it's the best level but it is where i had the luck of finding it because it was on our staircase here nope that was silver i think it was right yeah oh yeah it was right here <laughs> You can tell because now there's a big hole. Um, so what is this? Minus three. So it's actually in deep slate. Um, but yeah, very, very easy to do all of that. Combine them all together, smell them down. The gear is really easy. You just need an iron nugget in the middle. And then lumium equally as easy. Glowstone dust we already have. Silver dust and tin dust. And again, you get four from this recipe. Make sure you're getting it the right way, because again, 10, you could not put through the mace raider. You have to use a hammer on, which is a little annoying, but you, you do what you got to do whenever you want the things you want. And infinity range booster at not that much power increase is certainly something that I want. As you'll notice here, um, range infinite energy uses usage 9 ae per tick if i take this out we're down to 8 ae per tick so right huge one extra one extra ae per tick and the range goes down to 16 meters for for reference okay that means i can't even use this thing standing over here <laughs> i think a block is one meter if um if i'm not mistaken so yeah you know and if you want to link your your terminal if you're wondering like oh man how do i use this thing you have to have a wireless access point on your system somewhere somewhere on your system and then put your put your little terminal up in there and it'll say linked because that one uh, that one always fools me whenever i come back to applied energistics i'm like why is this damn thing not working well <laughs> you're not using it right anyways now on to the second point no i don't have huge discs down below <laughs> that you know pretty good statement for most of life really um <laughs> so what what we actually have down here is a couple of 16k me storage cells so you know really not that much we've already filled up one as far as types go which i'm really not happy to see but <laughs> that's kind of why i'm holding off on making any big ones because i i need to sort through the garbage the nonsense i need to put stuff in its place essentially and more so over i need to create some custom storage using the advantage of the storage bus now anytime you see me use a storage bus you're always going to see me put the priority on it high or at least higher than zero 
because if you read here insertion priority or it looks for high priority first on insertion so as i raise this whenever we put something into the system it's going to say check for the high priority first this is five right this is zero so we certainly want to insert into the drawers before filling up space on our disk and i hope that makes sense so you want a higher priority for insertion where it's going to go first so five goes here first zero avoids clogging the machine um secondly it says extraction lower priority first so what this means is say say we had this system up and going before i did all this which is exactly how it played out i had this up and then i decided let's add some storage drawers that i can fill up with random nonsense it's maybe not automated but i'm still going to have a lot of um so let's say somehow i got this onto a disc i don't know an easy way to do that right now but just just play pretend okay um what will happen is as i'm pulling out honey from our inventory from our disc um it'll pull everything from here first and then whenever i go to reinsert it it'll fill back in over here so it'll help you to actually clear off things from your um disc and put it over here just naturally by way of you using it now the reason i have so many things clocked up is because well we have some things that don't need to be in there basic fluid lava tank iron ore hammer all these one-offs that should really be in my backpack <laughs> but as you can see the backpack's kind of full and not really um in its best of shapes but that's okay so what we're working with is a couple of 16k me item storage cells and for those of you that are like man i'm, I'm lost he's just breezing through this Sometimes I learn better from seeing it first and then having someone say, hey, this is what this does. So we're going to go back and we're going to explain what each piece does, but just get a general overview. Don't stress it and um, sort of follow through the metrics, you know, just just listen and watch. So we have three 16K storage drives, which just 16K is how many bytes. So 16,000 bytes, as you can see there. I'm not sure the entire conversion of what a what a byte is. So let's see here. We have 800 or 8,268 bytes used here. If I pull out a stick, 8,268, 8,268. Pulled out one stick, 8,268. Still used. Okay. <laughs> so apparently a stick, one one stick did nothing. Let's see if I take out um, a stack. What was it? 8,268. A stack took out eight bytes. So eight items of a type equals one byte. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> eight items of one item type makes a byte. That's confusing, but uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's less confusing now that I say it out loud and I'm like thinking about it. Well, I mean, everything in Minecraft is broken down into fours and eights and 64s, so sure. Um, so what we're actually using to power this, we have an energy acceptor over here. I'm using the crystal resonance generator. You can use one of these per AE2 system, so I couldn't have another one sitting over here. But it essentially provides a little bit of uh, free power. I'm not sure how much because there, you, there's no way to gauge it, really. Um, I suppose if I broke this thing off there, I could somehow monitor how much power is going into the system. But uh, that's neither here nor there. The point is, it's it's free. You, it's not some complicated device. You don't have to put coal in here. You don't have to check it, maintain it. Just make sure it's on your AE2 system somewhere. And it's going to provide you free power. Now, um what's it called resonant yeah, there it is it's not expensive to make iron copper charge search quartz make sure you're paying attention to that um and then fluix blocks so everything that you're going to be running into in a2 anyways you can charge this either by using power 
right? Which we're already into. You can put them into the energizing orb. Or you can use the charger from AE2 itself. Or you can use the electrolyzer from modern industrialization. Um, I don't... Um, I, I'm trying to figure out theurgy. I, I believe I understand the concept of it, like the conceptualization. But as far as the practicality and the actual in-world usage, that's something that we're going to be getting into in the future because from my understanding upon initially reading it, is it's kind of like a more... Mm, I mean, for lack of better words, a more complicated version of Applied Energy not applied energy it's of project e and the fact that you can turn items and materials into other items and materials for instance you could theoretically turn iron into diamonds right so that's exciting and certainly something that we want to look into given we we get free iron and we get free coal and we get a whole lot of free um, resources right now from our quarry all we have to do is take some emeralds to a small uh, oh, excuse me. To a small little shop right here, right? 18 emeralds. We get four bronze drills, and four bronze drills gets us a lot of items like coal and copper and tin and osmium and iron and gold. Just like a whole slew. And we'll probably continue with modern industrialization as far as getting resources because there is another drill, maybe even two, that I'm going to be interested in um, using here. So we're using the bronze one currently. I don't think we're going to want to use the copper one. I just don't see me being like, oh, you know what? I need more cobblestone. Maybe, but I doubt it. Um, so we'll probably end up using the gold drill so we can get infinite ancient debris in the future and maybe magma. Um, quartz is really nice. Glowstone's really good. This gives us gold as well, but we're already, we're already producing gold, so we don't really need that. Um, but the stainless steel drill would come in handy with titanium tungsten platinum just some additional ones that we don't have access to with the bronze drill um, another one that would come in handy is just the steel so not stainless steel just steel and this one's a lot easier to get into really the biggest kicker for us right now is actually creating the electric quarry not creating this the steel drill itself so this is where we'll actually get diamond production, antimony, lapis, lead, emeralds, salt, aluminum, nickel, quartz, and uranite. So this is going to basically make up all of the, I guess, quote unquote, like normal ores, right? All the basic ones um, that you're kind of used to having in resource automation. And the steel drill is really not that tough to, to make here. So we'll probably make as many of these as we can or maybe set up some automation for it but that's my idea for moving forward with resource generation kinda i'm either gonna do this or we're gonna do bees right now i'm focused a little bit more on bees just because it seems to be the easier way um but so far we're also not too deep into bees i have the lumberjack bee which is nice because now we're getting free oh god <laughs> <laughs> that was close. So I like to fly, you know? Everything becomes easier with the power of flight. Um, so yeah, we, we have this auto... Um wood being produced and we're also still getting wood from over here so we're kind of double dipping in getting oak logs which is good because i you know i really hate to go out and mine trees in a mod pack <laughs> it's like how do you how do you make me feel the worst about what i'm doing and make me feel the least successful and i only have one lumber bee in there honestly i should probably go get a couple more um mating because why not you know we can afford it and uh, I'm kind of at a little bit of a standstill moving forward with some other ones. So take this out of here. Iron B. And this is actually what I want to get into today is how the heck to do bees. Because it can be... Okay, I'm all done with the bee puns. Um, <laughs> it, it can be 
you know, challenging to do a mod that may be new to you or maybe a really old mod that's since been updated since the last couple tutorials. But that's not really the case with Productive Bees. Um, man by the name of Pilpo, I think that's it, or Philpo, Pilpo, Philpo, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> he's recently done a guide. There's one maybe a year ago. Um, and if you're wondering about Applied Energistics 2, we'll get right back around to explaining that. But Bees is how we're going to be moving forward. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly. Essentially, you catch bees in a bee cage. Um, I think it does break the cage when I use this. Let me just get another cage ready. I really expected to have more cages. Are they in my... Ah, there's one. Okay, yeah, so that, that's probably the last one. So it allows you to catch the bee, and it is it does break after that. And then you can move them around. You can also see the bees have different stats on them. And essentially all you're going to want to do for this mod is... I always type in just at bees because there's also there's at productive bees and there's at productive trees. So if you just type in at bees, it sort of sorts out that nonsense for you. Um, but if you hit at bees, it'll show you everything that is within this singular mod. So it helps to sort of refine down what you're actually looking for here and everything that you can do with it. The bee nest helmet is really simple. It's just a diamond helmet with the bee nest on it. So says angry bees won't attack you, which I figured would be pretty handy while we're dealing with all this bee nonsense. And, I mean, it has good, you know, armor, literally the exact same as diamonds, so why not? Also, whenever you're attacked, there's a 30% chance to spawn a kamikaze bee, which I'm assuming helps to attack things. I've seen them spawned, I've never seen them attack anything. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Um, but essentially, these are your machines right here. So you're going to have the centrifuge and the powered centrifuge and the gene indexer and the breeding chamber. And I'll be able to talk more on what some of these do once I start using them. As of right now, I really only used a couple. So, and it, it's all pretty simple as far as I can tell. In the breeding chamber, and actually we'll go through this together because I'm about to try and make some more wood bees. So let's just get out what we need here. Green... Do I have two green carpenter bees? I do. So which one's better? Well, this one has weak endurance. I don't want a weak bee. I want a strong bee. Um, if you're ever curious, like, hey, how do I get that bee? What does that bee do? Uh, MEI is your friend. So here's the lumber bee. All right. And you probably found this if you were like, man, how can I get XYZ logs automated? And then it pulled up advanced beehive lumber bee. So if you click on the beehive, or bee specifically, left click that is, it'll pull up how you can actually breed to get this bee. So if I click on platinum, it'll tell me it's a gold bee and an ender bee. If I click on the lumber bee, it'll tell you it's a green carpenter bee and a yellow carpenter bee, both of which I found out in the wild. So, you know, some of the stuff you could just got to go find. However, you can also use a honey treat on the specified nest. If you see the little in hand motion, that means you're, you know, the little art there behind it. That means put this in your hand and smack it on the nest. After you do that, it'll be like, oh, it's got like, I can't remember if it's 1200 or 1800 seconds until it spawns the bee. Uh, but you can reduce the time if you just put more honey treats in there or whatever item it's telling you to put in. So yeah, you can have these guys spawn up if you need to, if you're not feeling like going out and finding them in the wild. We have a lot of bees naturally around us, so it wasn't really hard for me to do that. Um, then it just takes flowers, so it's going to tell you what item you have to put in in order to breed it. Some, well, I thought some bees would not take flowers, but it literally looks like every bee that I just saw there takes flowers, so uh, whatever. I'm using the, the red poppies because we're getting them from the iron farm automatically anyway, so it's, it's literally free. Um, but whenever you put them into the bee breeding chamber, one and two, and you can also breed them just naturally out, out in the world. But I found that I like to do this the best because it gives you 100% chance to get what you need. And it's, it's kind of more of a solid guarantee, like in my eyes, if I can just put in two inputs and know, know the output there. Um, 
Do I have more poppies on me? Did I take them out? Put them over here. Well, I don't love what I'm about to do, but I will do it, okay? It's not like this is really producing anything over here anyways. Um, as far as like, I don't have any bees set up over here. I've gone back and forth as to if I'm going to continue building that large bee tower over there or if I want to use kind of half and half or what the the setup will be essentially. So it does take a while, but you can see that the heart is starting to fill up. You'll also need some empty bee cages or at least one empty bee cage over here in order to capture the bee. Now, when this fills all the way up, it's going to put you out a baby bee, uh, a baby bee, which can then go into the baby incubator. What it's going to take is the, the bee in the bee cage. So imagine there's a bee. Well, imagine there's a bee in this bee cage. It's going to take that in here. It's going to take 20 honey treats. You can make this by combining honeycomb with a block of honey, right? Honey bottle. And of course, all of this you can get from normal Minecraft bees, vanilla bees, with uh, with an advanced hive. You can do it really, really easy. So you're going to put it in 20 honey treats. Again, it's going to take it a minute, and then your bee will pop out as an adult still in the cage so you don't have to worry about it escaping uh, but we're going to leave that to its stuff because that's going to take quite some time but that's how you do bee breeding then as far as resource collection goes with bees we can fly over here this isn't the best example because we don't have any combs being produced here any honeycombs they're just normal um, honeycombs so we'll have to explain a bit more perhaps in the next um next B setup that we do up here. Any hoosers, the way that this beehive works, and we just have a basic advanced beehive here. And then as we move up, you'll see, oh, let me put on hover. We have advanced oak beehive, but we also have an oak expansion box on top of it. So you, it can hold more bees. It can hold upgrades. Um, what else? That's it. It can hold more bees and it can hold upgrades. So, I mean, honestly, we you don't need all of that for the, this. If you want five bees in your bottom one, go for it. It's It's been producing enough honey and enough everything quick enough that I've not felt the need to... Oh, no, I made a huge mistake. It's going too slow. You know, I've never, never run out of honey or honeycomb in the process of doing all the bee stuff. Um... And this is kind of why I took a break from AE2 so I could come over to the bees because I knew I was going to forget something. And now that those are breeding, it's going to take it a minute and then I can go back and show you their uh, their finished production. So all we have here, it's very simple. We have a storage drawer with empty bottles. Let me turn off this hover. It is the red wire. It's pulling out, out, out. It's going into the beehive and then it's filling up this slot right here. Then coming out of the beehive, you can see the yellow cable. It's pushing our results. So the honeycombs are made naturally. Um, and if you don't pull them out, they'll just appear over here. And the bottles are also made naturally. This will slowly fill up over time. And if you don't do something about it, it'll get the same sort of honeyed look that you'd see on a normal beehive. Of course, mine is being constantly withdrawn. So we don't have that um, effect going on. In the future, when we get to the point where we're drawing out honeycombs that need to be centrifuged, we'll probably adjust the setup. It'll look something like uh, a centrifuge over here or something. And then we pull the honeycomb to send into the centrifuge and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's that's basically all there is to it. And the same concept here. Bottles go in, bottles go in here. Honey comes out here, honeycomb comes out here. And of course, logs come out here, which is really nice because now I don't have to worry about any complex setup. I'm working on getting this one lonesome bee a friend and then I'll be swelling well and we should be producing enough wood at a decent enough rate that I don't have to worry about it anymore or at least for the foreseeable future. All right, sorry. So with that out of the way, that's basically everything that I've done with bees so far. Um, we'll go back and get the bee from over here. Let's see.
Oh, it's just about done. I figured it would be after that long-winded explanation. So there we go. Perfect timing. Lumber bee is in the bee cage. And if you hold shift, you can see up at the top, right underneath the um, title where it's telling you what it is, it says child. This is a child bee. So we got to put it in the baby incubator and then throw some honey treats in there. Let's see how many of these I can make. One. <laughs> I know I can make more. Do I not have any honey over here? Have I, have I actually honey? Yes, I have. Oh, he smokes. I mean, I guess that makes sense because I've already made, I made the iron bee. I made the aluminum bee. I just don't have the iron bee set up because like I said, we have the, you know, we have stuff. We have guys for that. Hold on. All right, and then while I'm right here, let's just go ahead and do this. And that. And then grab my glass bottles, which I need to make some more of, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> make another stack I just I just went and gathered all this glass and then I just used it all so I'm sure you can understand why I'm a little hesitant to give it away all right so there are 64 in there that's more than enough for glass let's throw all these in here there we go um and sure throw some more honeycomb into the system oh shit I didn't mean to throw the honey treat in there it's fine and now we have another six blocks of honey, which should be more than enough to get us our honey treat that we need, because you only need 20, like I said. One more, boop. And one honey to spare. I hate using hovered across the water because it just takes so long. I found what works the best is kind of getting up high and then using vector and looking low um, in order to blast over. So that's the lumber bee. What is this? Oh, this is a water bee. That's the bee that I used in the example. So yeah, um, here we have the crystalline bee. This is a good example of a bee that I had to attract. So if you need a bee nest, let's just search crystalline, oh, crystalline, crystalline bee. You see that you can get a crystalline bee if you put nether quartz into a quartz hot or a quartz nest, but maybe you don't want to spend 30 minutes looking around the nether for a quartz nest. I know I certainly didn't. So what you can do is take an iron sword, take a nether quartz or block, so you'll need silk touch, um, and then boom, bam, you got your quartz nest. Now I will say you don't get to keep the iron sword. It's going to use the iron sword, but again, you have an iron farm, so don't don't fret about it. The quartz nest will remain even after the bee spawns. You can keep spawning up bees if you wanna. Um, and then yeah, you're good to go. Now the crystalline bee doesn't does it? A crystalline comb? What do you do with a crystalline comb? Nether quartz. Holy smokes. I thought this didn't do anything. Most of the base bees that you kind of need for breeding don't actually produce anything. It's, they're just there for breeding purposes, kind of. Um, for example, I don't think the carpenter bees do anything. <laughs> um, but this is really nice that we can get infinite nether quartz from this. So we may we may go set up the uh, the crystalline bee in its in its own nest. So what do you need? You just need a block of of quartz. Yeah, let's let's do that because I think we have we have two of these bees already, right? We have two crystalline bees already. Um, the reason that I needed the crystalline bees, though, is you'll see here in bee breeding. This is how you can get a couple of the metals. So we got the aluminum bee, and all of these are the same. You need an ashy mining bee, which we found out in the wild. Hallelujah! Um, but if you don't, you can also get it from a gravel nest with honey treat or sand or dirt. So you know, there you go. Anyways, bee breeding. So you can get tin, aluminum, iron, specifically gold, right? I think we actually also have a mason bee. So maybe I should go ahead and get a gold bee. Copper, iridium, 
mineral, spatial, aluminum. We're back to the beginning. <laughs> uh, but of course, then with the iron bee, you can get like a uranite bee, a lead bee, an osmium, a steel bee, which is really nice because steel can be kind of annoying. Titanium bee, which is really nice, right? Invar, which can be annoying. Silver, radioactive, which just gives you uranium. Uranite is different than uranium. Just so you know, uranite is power. Uranium... I mean, really, uranium can be used for most things because it can be used in mechanism. It can also be used in power, though. So, any hoosers, um, Ferrocor B, you know, there's 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 so many items that we can get with the bees. So that's kind of what I want to dive into this. You can go modern industrialization. We just win it in our last pack. So that's why I'm kind of weighing which which option do I really want to use. And for right now, a combination is kind of what's working best. And there's nothing saying that we can't do that. Now, if you are going to go with uh, modern industrialization, I will just go ahead and give you this little tidbit. The only drill that can really work in a steam quarry, there's only two, is bronze and copper. So that, that's that's your range right here. The electric drill, that's when you can start getting diamond and netherite or ancient debris. Sorry, I'm correct myself. And like everything else that you're going to need. However, the electric quarry is a bit of a motherfucker to make. <laughs> it's a bit of a hefty recipe, right? Because you're going to need four large motors and a robot arm and advanced machine hole and electronic circuit. Now, if you're already excuse the phrase but if you're already balls deep in modern industrialization then cool um this this probably shouldn't be an issue and if you again if you have any questions about modern industrialization i just did a mod pack on basically that f was solely focused on modern industrialization so all the automation and all the beginning steps all the way up to the end with reactors and what you'll be using reactors for um, all that's kind of covered in that series in a very natural flowing way because the quest pack in that mod pack takes you through modern industrialization sort of bit by bit. Um, anyways, back to AE2 stuff. I'll explain it real quick because I said I was going to go through it and I know there's probably some people that have never used this mod before. So AE2... I'm not going to go through and explain it fully because the Chosen Architect just did a full breakdown on it. Um, so if you're really, really curious, I do highly recommend going and watching that video. But for those of you that are like, I have no idea what this does, and this is the storage mod that everyone seems to be using. So what what the flip is, you know, up with it? The way it works is all of your items are stored quote unquote, digitally. Instead of being in a chest where you can see them and grab them and yada, 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 they're stored on these cells. So for example, if I use my crafting terminal here, all of our items that you see here are either on these cells or they're connected to an external storage bit. So this is something else we'll get into. Um, so you can see here we have 167 sticks. I come in here and I pull out 64 of them. Well, hell, it took it off the list. If I come in here and pull out one of them, you can see we now have 166. So all of these items are on this disc. If I take this disc out of this disc drive, there's nothing on that. There's a lot of stuff on that. Now the only thing we can see is stuff that I've hooked up externally, which is actually a pretty cool um, way to see sort of what's on the disc and what's off and what you're really working with. So you'll see we have honeycomb. Okay, well, here's this external um, storage system. We have a storage controller from functional storage, which has been connected up with all of the drawers here. And all the drawers have been locked. So that way items, whenever I go to put them into the system, don't automatically go here, right? Because insertion is going to happen here first. Um, for a good little... I keep hitting B for backpack. For a good little example, let's just um, see it case in point. So if I open up this drawer here, and then I say, you know what, I'm all done with these smooth stone. Let's throw them into the system. They're going to first and foremost go right here. The reason being is, well, the priority is higher here, remember? So insertion happens here first. So if you don't want this to fill up with random nonsense, lock everything in your functional storage using your configuration tool. 
which is not that hard to make here. Um, so everything's locked, including the honey one. And even if it is locked, though, I can still come up with the item that I want to start being stored here and just right click it and it's going to take it. I don't have to unlock it. I don't have to worry about messing with the system or whatever. Obviously, I don't, I don't want that, but you know, it's all right. <laughs> you can just simply fix it by doing that right there. In case you get something stuck, unlock it, take it all out, relock it. It'll be back to cleared and whatever. Now we're using the ME storage bus to access the storage controller because the storage controller actually has access to all of these boxes. That's kind of what this functional storage mod does is it gives you a bunch of drawers which can hold a ton of items. So this one drawer here can hold 2000 honeycomb. So instead of having a chest that can hold, you know, I, I don't know how many items a chest can hold. This just kind of makes things a bit easier for storage. So we can hold a whole lot of items within this. We can also upgrade it, hold more, yada, yada, yada. So if I take these honeycombs out, theoretically, if I just had a functional storage, I could walk up with all the items that I have here on the wall and just right click them in. And they're going to go directly where they should. So the way that AE2 is working with this is we have a storage bus, which essentially you connect to any external storage. I could have this connected to a chest and it would read everything that's in the chest instead of on the wall. Um, so yeah, it's just saying, hey, look at that inventory. And if I need something for it, or if I want to use it, or if, you know, if like this, if I'm using a crafting terminal, display it, show it, let me see it, let me grab it, let me use it. Um, should have that honey block go in there. That's a little concerning. Shouldn't be any space for that. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's how it works. That's the external storage. Now you'll notice we still have copper and tin and iron and coal and all this stuff here. The honeycomb we just saw is coming from over here. Everything else, all this stuff, this is actually being stored elsewhere. So let's throw all this back in. And let's come over here. Just follow the cable. It's messy, but that's okay. This is another... St okay, Vector, you're fucking with me. This is another storage bus right here, as you can see. And again, priority set to 10. So everything's actually going into here first. But that's because this storage controller is actually set up somewhere in a very familiar place. So let's go back outside. Well, it's nighttime, so let's uh, let's go to sleep, and then we'll go back outside. Oops, let me switch those. They always be spawning on the roof. Oh fuck! No, oh, I got away. Okay, didn't get away that time, but it's all right. Um. I don't know how I just took that point blank to the face with only this on. What? Because normally, doesn't a creeper like actually light you, the, you know, light you up? Um. Anyways, I got, got super distracted by that. So much so I forgot what I was coming out here to check for. Um, I know it was A2 related. I just don't remember. Oh storage controller i was like man it's like i had locational memory for this how many do i have 40 okay i i've been i've been doing my due diligence with these bronze drills i tell you um so here's that storage controller and if i mine a little hole whoop, there's all the wires so an even better example would be if i get out the linking tool Right. If you shift right click, you'll select the controller. The big green box, that is the range that this specific controller works in. So I could put a drawer over here. I can still reach it. The drawer doesn't technically have to be touching the drawer. Does that make sense? Or the controller. So this drawer is hooked up to this controller. And obviously it's not touching it. There's no cables. There's no hoopla. So essentially what you do is you shift right click the drawer or the controller rather that you want configured. So this one, and then you just select the drawer that you want to add to it. There you go, it's added. It was already added, but if it wasn't added, it would be now. <laughs> and 
And of course, if you hover off the item, that GUI sort of goes away. So real, real simple there. And again, these are all locked up. And this is just, you know, same thing as before. This is still everything just coming out of the Steam Quarry, getting macerated down, being processed, and being shipped on through. I have, of course, um, upgraded these as well to both have void upgrades and gold upgrades from functional storage. These are made pretty simply by adding a lot of blocks together. <laughs> right? I didn't feel like spending that many diamonds for this. Gold and iron, those are duplicate. Dupl those are infinite right now, theoretically. You know, we give it enough time. Like, those are being auto-crafted, created, whatever you want to call it. Uh, diamonds, I still got to go down and find those, so. Um, now, the whole reason, again, that I didn't go into the uranite and everything that I'm... Skeleton out there. Um, and everything that I'm doing right here is because I, I just, just did it in um, Project Architect, so it's kind of... It's kind of fresh, freshly explained and everything. Any hoosers? I think uh, I think we're gonna try and set up this beehive over here, and we might call it. We'll we'll see what what time we're we're running at there. All right, so at bees, I want to get an advanced oak beehive. Can I do this? I can. Right on. And an oak expansion box. I assume I do need to mine down in here. What key am I using for this? C? X? Z? It's Z. Just one block. Or actually, you know what? I can stay there. Let's get um, some basic oak doors. And I believe in my chest here, yeah, I have, have these little golden trap doors, which are really just normal oak trap doors, but I threw them through the chip machine. So there we go. Um, then we're going to pew, pew. <laughs> and throw this down. So you can actually see me build this setup in person, which is something that I don't really do too often but it's because I fear that I'm going to mess something up or have a lot of troubleshooting in it. And then it's going to turn into a 30, 45 minute video where I'm like, well, I thought we were going to accomplish this today, but in actuality, we did not. So whenever I do things this way, it's like I get to accomplish what I need to get done. And whether it took me an hour or whatever to figure out how to do it, you still get the same result of, hey, this is how you do this. <laughs> but in one case, it's clear and concise and um, to the point and much easier to understand and in the other case it's a jumbled hot mess so you know anyways here is the oak expansion the advanced so you can see we have the five we have everything set up just like down below now what we're going to want is a feeding slab um, which you don't technically have to have okay but i'll explain how this works as we get this and the crystalline bees, where are those? Right here. So I need to see what they need to eat. I think it was just um, nether quartz, yeah. No, that's bee spawning. Quartz pillar, block of quartz, quartz ore. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this feeding slab. We're going to place it directly in front of the advanced oak beehive. Like, not not directly in front of like covering it up but directly in front of like a doormat so to speak right um then we're going to take the items that it requested or an item i don't think we have to necessarily do all of them but since we're gonna have two bees let's try to make sure we have enough so uh, nether quartz ore let's just throw two on there so if you right click this thing it'll open up into a menu there you go just, just a little something for each bee, you know, so they can, they feel like their own person. Um, and then that's it. Technically, you don't have to give them all this room that I have here, right? You can just, you can slap up a wall here, a wall on this block, and a wall on this block, and they'll never be able to escape because they will only ever come out of or go into this one spot, and they don't need more room than one solid block. 
So this structure is a bit bigger than what is actually necessary, but I mean, come on, you gotta let your bees out and let them fly around a little bit, you know? Gotta, gotta let them be some uh, some natural animals. Anyways, um, there we go. Man, this productivity on this bee is high. Can I? Is there a way? Do I have any flowers in here? Have some rose bushes. Do you guys like rose bushes? Can I breed you two together in here and just get more bees? Does that work like that? It does. Let's go. <laughs> um. So then, let me ask you this, bees. Okay, since you are breeding and whatnot, do you have the little thing that says? No, you don't. Okay, interesting. See, because I believe the lumber bee, if you were to try that with that bee, it wouldn't work because if you click on this little info on EMI, has a healthy obsession with wood logs. Okay, get it a little joke. This species of bees can't breed amongst themselves. Um, so there is no ability for the bee to um, like take a, take a mate with, within its own uh weight class so to speak its own uh species range I, I don't know how you want me to explain that okay all right so what do you guys actually like what do you what do you actually produce for me crystalline just a crystalline comb i'm gonna assume you also make honey right well let's see let's uh Here's a good experiment, because the last time I just sort of kept setting up drawers until until I thought I was good. <laughs> what we're going to do this time is we're going to do it smart, and I'm just going to put a chest out here, and we're going to see what all outputs we get from this. And of course, I think we'll also still get honey, so maybe we still want to insert some glass bottles into here. Uh... Maybe I can actually. Oh, there it is. I was gonna say, I know I still have some red item pipes in here. Maybe I can actually. Oh, too low. How low can you go? Too low. I don't want to hit the flow. All right, so let's take out and in. And now I can just use this one drawer for both. Both beehives, that's good. Now that it has glass bottles. Right on. But we're also gonna need more glass bottles in here. That's okay though. Um, so yeah, now we'll oh, there it goes. So I guess that was it. We got seven crystalline comb. And then of course you can take this to make a crystalline comb block, which I'm not sure what that does, or you can break it down in a centrifuge to get three nether quartz, some wax, and 100 mil buckets of honey. So what's the comb do? 12 nether quartz and 400 mil buckets of honey. Okay, so it just, just does more of the item you're actually trying to make. But this is one goes into one and then one turns into four? Oh my god, I'm just sitting there wasting my jetpack fuel. Oh goodness, you way to scare the shit out of me there, Enderman. He's, he's dancing? What is he doing up there on the map? He's just spinning wildly in circles. Yep, alright. Oh, I'm sorry, I embarrassed him. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, Bubs, you might, you might should have been embarrassed by that. Um... So that doesn't make any sense. Okay, the recipe is just reading wrong. So then that doesn't do as much as what I thought it did. So one gets you three, or four combined together gets you 12. So it's not a better conversion. But I think there's a B upgrade where you can have the machine just put out comb blocks instead of the other ones, right? Let's see. At bees. Uh, da, 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 da. 
You can also get the simulator upgrade, and this will make it to where bees no longer leave the hive. They simulate leaving the hive, basically just making it to where you don't have to, you know, cage them in anymore. You can just kind of put them on display wherever the heck you want. Um, da, 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 da. Actually, you know, I know that you need this one to... Nope, that's for the simulator. Where is it? Oh, changes the produced output to comb blocks instead of honeycombs. But in order to get this, you need draconic chunk from draconic dust from a draconic bee, I think. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> so you need to fight the, the ender dragon for that and have an obsidian nest. So that's that one's, you know... We can call it off in the distance. We're only on episode four. I'm not I'm not stressing or sweating fighting the Ender Dragon. Although I will say we probably get a pretty damn good shot given I have an armored jetpack and really all I'm missing is some good range damage. Like our, our sword's all right. Sharpness four, mending, sweeping edge. Uh, sweeping edge, I'm not going to lie. I am worried about that one. But everything else on it's good. Um, so whatever. Okay, so back back to the B stuff. That I, that's what I was actually focusing on. So if I put this into a centrifuge, I'm only 50% chance going to get this. Is it 100% with this? Is that the difference? 50% chance. So 100% of the time you're getting honey, but only 50% of the time you're getting what you want. Now wax, what can I do with this? Make a candle, make a wax block, wax some copper, Mm, yeah, weathering station. Okay, interesting. Well, I'm not going to lie, it's basically used for nothing then, <laughs> right? Wax block, does this do anything? Changes the produced output to cone blocks instead of a... Okay, all right, all right. Cheeky bastard, send me right back where I came from. You can use it for fuel. Candles. I know you need candles for something, right? Like the rituals from occultism or something. Not that I'm using occultism, but... You know? Okay, so we really don't want wax. Well, we do want to put it... We we want to turn these into the, the big boy version, right? Because this gives us 100 milli buckets of honey. This gives us 400. So it ends up equating out. And this way it takes less time because we're putting one item in and we're doing four items at a time, right? So, centrifuge. Where are you? Well, I definitely wanted to use a powered centrifuge if I can. Looks like got to make a basic one first though. Cauldron plus a grindstone. Mm -hmm. And... I'm missing stone. Where's my pocket storage? I got a I got a pocket full of blocks. And I'm not gonna say what problems with that. Um I think I needed some slabs for this specifically. There, we'll throw the stones in. And yeah, there we go. Alright. Centrifuge. And then to make the other bit. Well, hell, I guess I can just hit you on you. What? I know I have some basic capacitors. Where are my capacitors? Oh. Well, I guess you just live in our house now with us because you have a block, which means you're not going to despawn until I look at you one day and then I got to murder you. Wait. Is that it? There they are. I knew I should have had some basic capacitors. I'll, I'll say that. How about, how about that? Howard centrifuge. Woo! We got it. Now, hopefully this bad boy works rather quickly. Where do we want to put this? Uh, I mean, honestly, probably on this same network over here. Um, I do want to combine these as much as I can. Apparently just once. What? That's gross. I'm missing something here. No, that didn't work. 
What? Is this this one has to go in the centrifuge? It can't go in a powered centrifuge? I'm, I'm a little confused here, Doc. This yeah, it's just <laughs> No. I don't want the I don't want that stuff. Also, we just put three in and we only got one nether quartz out. But I managed to get three wax. I tell you now, I'm not excited about it. So wax is a guaranteed thing, and yeah, it is only 50% chance for this nether quartz. Also, I can't put the honeycomb block in there, so maybe there's something up with it. My goodness, is it actually 50% chance? I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So I don't know how many blocks we had, what, seven? And we got three? All right, all right, hey, we, it was close. <laughs> it's real close there. But that's still not a bad little, like, we, we can automate that, right? We can pull out the honey and the wax and the items. Like, that's that's not too shabby. Interesting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that may be it. Oh, we're getting close on time. I really wanted to go find a snow biome on camera just to, like, you know, kind of explore with you guys. I know some people, they actually don't play mod packs. They just like watching it. And I, I you know, I kind of get that. It's like you get to watch someone else do all the heavy lifting, make all the progress, and maybe you still feel the joy um, that they feel when, when they complete it. I'm not sure. I can't speak for you. Uh, but yeah, I really need to find a cold biome, but it's like, it's nothing but hot. Hot, hot, hot. Lukewarm. Um... So maybe maybe I'll just have to do that on all in time because it's it's gonna take us a minute. Probably heading in this direction, kind of back towards what well, no, 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 initial spawn was over here. Um if you're looking for the seed, I did drop it in one of the earlier videos. Might have been the last one, might have been the one before that. Anyways, yeah, we, we're gonna go ahead and call it here because I don't want to go on that whole big adventure. And well, we got everything we want to do. Let me check in on the bees one more time just to see like What's production rate like? Because I've kind of been fucking off for a little bit, right? And I'll fix this setup here in a little bit. So yeah, we get the natural honeycombs. How do we get the natural honeycombs? What's what's you do that too? You do natural and and crystalline, huh? You think you special or something? I guess so. Um, I mean honestly, 28 over here, but it depends like this should theoretically be 14 more nether quartz, which is not 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 bad production rate. It's not going to have you immediately sitting comfy and everything and anything you do, but it's certainly not bad. And just just for my peace peace of mind sake, let's try this one more time. No, 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 no. Not just not not having it today, Junior. Okay. Um, sim simple question. Just because I am I'm a curious lad. Here is just a centrifuge, okay? Are you right there? No, come on. Why did why why? But why? How does this work? Whoa, I'm in I'm in it. I mean, it's in it it's in me, maybe. I'm not sure. I can't shift click it in. So it just doesn't work? <laughs> Does this need something special with it? That's a heated centrifuge. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I have to use a heated centrifuge? You really got to be more specific on this stuff. So this just says centrifuge. But down here it says heated. So maybe it has to be a heated one. Which would mean we need an inactive dragon egg for that. That's okay. Yeah, nope, not happening. You know what? Take take my tiny combs. How about that, all right? Wait a minute. This powered one? Powered one goes faster. That makes sense. Whoa, that looks cool. They're all, like, sort of spinning around in there. That That's really dope. All right, I'm back on back on the side of, of productive bees. Seems cool. <laughs> I don't know how much power that actually draws though as long as it's not you know an insane amount then that's that's very much 
very much well worth it look trust me indy indy can i call you that you know enderman friend indy um i didn't want to wake up with my face in your ass all right that's not what i was looking for uh, on this morning but you you chose to position thought i heard something oh it's probably just the bees on my head you chose to position yourself like that all right so really it, it's um you big boy all right well that's working I, i'm happy to see it I'm happy with the progress we made today maybe maybe i'm just happy in general <laughs> thanks everybody for watching i uh, hope this video in some way made you happy not um in a disgusting way just in a make sure i'm not looking at my enderman um just in a you know completely plutonic hope you learn something from this kind of kind of thing if so please be sure to leave a like down below i'm gonna segue out of that um slightly weird spot i managed to wedge myself into um and yeah you know leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on how to continue with bees here other than hey chance you need to be confining them to one block space because hey, i'm i'm gonna give them their freedom bees are uh important too i was gonna say something but i don't think it should be jested about and so instead we're just gonna say bees are cool and i i cannot believe that i have yeah, all right we'll stop there because i've made enough this episode thanks everybody for watching like comment subscribe if you're new here you want to see more awesome content content from yours truly um and as per the usual i do hope you all stay safe stay awesome and stay crafting until next time, you be a beautiful, last one, promise, beautiful people. Peace out. Howdy, howdy. Future chance here just to explain this system behind me that I never really kind of dove into. And this is actually something that I didn't do last episode. So we did the tree farm. Yes, true. However, I didn't really ever go over my modular router setup, how I got modular routers working, um, and how I have this... Uh, you know, 2000 plus certs quartz just sort of casually built up. So real quick, we'll go through this um, for Applied Energistics 2. There are a lot of tutorials on this, even Applied Energistics itself in its God, wherever, wherever that may be. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure where that God book ran off to. There it is. So if you need an example of this there's also stuff in here so let's see semi-auto certs quartz farm right here's something with some growth accelerators and it has an annihilation plane and all, all kinds of stuff right it's going to keep you set up and there's also a uh, a simple certs farm right very very easy to set up it explains it all and there's the advanced multiple barrels and yada 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 um our our system works fun so basically we have a flawless budding certs quartz you can pick this up if you use a cardboard box right so set this down shift right click there's flawless budding certs quartz right click it with the cardboard box now i can pick it up and it's not going to break the block. But if you try to just break a flawless budding certs quartz, even if you have um, silk touch, it's it's going to end poorly for you. You're going to mess up the block. So trust me, throw a cardboard box on there. And again, cardboard is just made from sawdust. Sawdust you can get from the sawmill. And I don't know how to find the recipe quickly here. So we're just going to say, look it up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, you know, just pick it up with a cardboard box and you can move it wherever you want then we have a couple growth accelerators all of which are assisting in the growth of the uh the certs quartz cluster so if i break this here you'll notice that it's well one going to go into the item collector and that's kind of how we're doing this that's why on our modular router i don't have to have a sender or anything like that because when it gets broken the item collector picks it up and sends it over it can't send it over because it's currently full but it would if it could Anyways, you'll notice that the uh, quartz bud here actually has to grow into the search quartz cluster as it just did. Well, this typically takes a rather long time. However, by putting a growth accelerator or even better four or even better, you could have five by having one down below. Um, you get the ability to to assist in speeding this up. And that's literally all it does. It takes some AE 
and it speeds up the growing process. How much a, you know, I'm, I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure. <laughs> um, it looks like a little bit every so often, but that number is flashing too fast. Maybe it says 64. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyways, um, so it's going to build this up and grow it over time. Then we have in here a modular router with a diamond pickaxe that has fortune three on it. That's kind of important because it's going to break the, the block for us. And I believe these are uh, fortunable as in they, they are affected by fortune. So fortune three pickaxe with efficiency. Efficiency doesn't really matter if anything I should have in breaking on here and possibly mending, but it's okay. The pickaxe is still healthy and fine. So we're going to leave it as is for now. Then we have a breaker module. This is pretty easy to make. You just make it with whatever pickaxe you kind of want it to have the stats of. Um, if that makes sense. So maybe this is what I should have added. The what's it called to? Maybe it's not even using this pickaxe. No, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's been quite a while since I used modular routers. I'm pretty sure you have to block in the in the buffer if you're gonna use the breaker module, right? This doesn't just work all willy-nilly. Shit, maybe it does. In which case, this pickaxe should have been the pickaxe that I used to make this module with, and it's not. So we're not using fortune on these, which is still pretty insane because we obviously have 2,000 plus uh, crystals. Anyways, when you put the breaker module into your modular router, there are a couple things you'll want to adjust with it. So hit C while you're hovering it. This will allow you to select where the breaker module is actually looking to activate or to function on. So we're doing it in front of the modular router, as you can see. Um, and then this is telling it what to break. So in the whitelist, we want it to break certs quartz crystal. And here it says match by dropped items. So if we were trying to mine gold, right? such as this gold ore in the filter, we'll want to put raw gold because that is the drop of this block. Does that make sense? If you want to get the block, click on this, and then it says match by block. So if I wanted to pick this up, say I had silk touch on the pickaxe, then you'd want to match by block because then whenever we break this, it's going to pick up gold ore. I don't know why you'd be placing gold ore just pick it up but you know whatever whatever tickles your fancy you know maybe it's needed in some kind of way now i have this set to redstone mode on never because i don't actually want this to continue going i have 2000 search cords here i just i just don't need it to continue to uh push through secondly and i'm going to try and get through this rather quickly because i never actually went through it this is my a2 system or setup for making a lot of processors and uh, keeping things running smoothly. It looks really complicated. It's not when we break it down, um, which I'll do now. So we have an energy acceptor, which is basically just saying, hey, take this FE and turn it into the AE energy that you use, because otherwise you can't just pipe energy directly into these things, which is funny because, you know, Applied Energistics, after all these years, every other mod has gotten on board with just saying, yeah, whatever, just put the energy cable right in the back, right there where the big hole is. But Applied Energistics, no, no, no. Send it into this one square, which will then distribute it through the entire system, but it doesn't affect channels, it doesn't affect anything, you just kind of need it. <laughs> it can't. You can't even make it yourself within the mod. So why not let us put a fucking pipe straight into any of these? Anyways... I digress. It's just, you know, some things are... Some things are awesome. So, uh, energy cell. This is going to be our storage buffer. Um, so you go energy acceptor, which literally just says, hey, transform the uh, the F to an A. Just, just That's it. Just tr turn it. Turn the letter back a couple bits there. On the left side, we have a charger and then a basic chest, which has charged search quartz in it because... We are pulling out from this. Sorry, that's pushing. We're pulling out from this regular search quartz. It's going into the charger. And then we're pulling out from the charger, charge search quartz. So let's see, I have some search quartz crystal here. I put it in there. Boop, boop, boop. 
charged and it's going to send it back in just a real simple setup it's powered just by connecting to the energy cell here as is all of these inscribers here um, now the reason we have so many inscribers is because i wanted one for each of the basic um, presses so we have silicone engineering uh, calculation and logic and then up top same kind of principle as in each of these will get a different set so this one is for the calculation um this one's for logic and i just have it filtered in the top pipes what can go into the inscriber that one's not filtered at all but i don't think i'm sending anything into it i'm just not needed it yet this is the engineering so yeah i just have it filtered here um as far as pushing items into these bottom subscribe or inscribers, the silicone press or whatever the the press that you have here is going to stay there. It's not going to be used up in the recipe. It's not going to be traded, whatever. So all you really need to insert is the item that you want done. So here we have some silicone, and ignore the fact that this is a bit cramped. <laughs> um, if I throw silicone into this barrel, it's going to come out through the pipe into the machine. You'll see it's here with the press. It's going to start working through, as you can read on the percent. You can even visually watch it. It's going to press it. And then on the back side here, um, on the underside, on the underside, on the underside, we're pulling out the result. Because I believe that's how you actually have to do it. Maybe not. Maybe they've changed it. Oh, no, 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 that's right. Automation access mode. So they have finally updated this to where you can access an inscriber from any side. So items go in. When the result comes out, it's coming out of the bottom. And it's just going into this first set of oak drawers. The reason I have them split separately is because if I ever wanted to say, hey, don't use the silicone um, plates or whatever the hell they're called on engineering ones, because I have plenty of those, only use them on logic then we can do that fairly or is that calculation these two always confuse me the diamond and the certs one anyways not on what they actually do just on what their names are uh we also need to put some redstone back up top because the redstone is what actually gets merged in with these to produce the final processor here so if i take out one of those well i don't have anything working for me over there but if you take a look at the logic processor in the inscriber, you take the printed logic circuit, which comes from putting gold into the logic press. Hence, gold logic press goes in here. It'll make you this logic circuit. And then you can put that back into another inscriber or the same one if you happen to have not made two with a piece of printed silicone, which again, inscriber, silicone, printed, right? And then you get your logic processor. And these are just needed for getting into the actual storage components. So this is, you need what, one logic processor for a 1K storage component. And then if you combine three of these together, plus a calculation processor, well, now you have a 4K. And if you combine those together, now you have a 16K. Combine those together, 64K and so on and so forth, right? It's, it goes on for quite some time. Um, but that just means you can store more and more items within your system. Not more item types, just more items. Because remember, Applied Energistics, you can only have 63 types of items within each drive, which is a little crazy, but it's, yeah, I digress. <laughs> anyway, so that's all the stuff that hopefully I had missed um, from the actual episode. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next episode. And until then, take care and bye-bye. Uh,